this is module 30. The title of the module is Corpora Future Indian Needs. So, this is the last module of this course. Here, we are trying to identify what are the present requirements of the Indian languages to, to classify them accordingly and propose for development some corpora for Indian languages, the processing and utilizations. So, you have already noted throughout the course, we are always trying to emphasize most on Indian languages, keeping in mind the requirement of the country and its people and its languages. So, even though there have been several theoretical issues discussed, practical issues, practical problems are identified, discussed, highlighted and presented before you to ponder over. Here, I would try to concentrate mostly on generation of corpora of different types and Indian languages, which I personally believe are essential requirements for the betterment of Indian languages and people. So, I'll first I'll realize uh, I'll discuss about our realizations of the present state in, in a corp corpus development activities of the country. Then also we'll try identify one by one what are the things we require. So, the realization is like this. What is realized here that the activities relating to corpus generation, storage, management, processing, analysis and information deduction from those corpora as well as utilization of linguistic data and information corpora in all other fields of linguistics and language technology are much ahead in advanced languages. Particularly, if we look at the corpora developed in English, Spanish, Chinese, Japanese, Portuguese, Dutch, German and many other languages, you will be surprised to know that we are really surprised to find that there is almost uh, there is uh, at, uh, at almost no field is left out where corpus and its relevant information is not being used. That means all the branches, all the domains of language studies are somehow directly or indirectly depending on data and information retrieved from corpora. And as a result, they have got more advanced resources. These languages are called resource full or resource rich languages. Because whatever the type of required language data you ask for, you will get at least if not a full project one at certain amount. But if you look back into look back to the Indian languages, we find that Indian languages are mostly called resource poor languages because there is least resources. One of the major reasons is that we have not yet given much emphasis on generation of language corpora of various types for most of these languages and never tried to utilize them. Whatever we have, we have never tried to process them, to analyze them, to utilize them, to extract information from them and to substantiate our existing knowledge base, existing databases with new findings. So, this has been a real challenge for us. So, realization is that Indian languages still lag far behind compared to the Western languages, advanced languages. Fallacy is somewhere that, irony is somewhere else. If you find that first most frequently used 10 languages, if you take into consideration, at least half of them come from Indian subcontinent, say Bangla comes, Hindi comes, Telugu comes, Tamil comes, at least four. But point is that if you look at the resources available, technology available for those languages are far behind. What are the problems then? Many problems. Problem 
lack of inspiration, lack of insight, lack of training manpower, lack of resources, financial support, lack of patronage. So various issues involved in it. So even if we keep those things into mind, the reality is that we are lacking far behind. And because of these things, because of our apathy towards our mother tongues, because of lack of interest to our mother tongue, we are not in a position to put our language to the place where it should be. We know that Bangla has, Hindi has a huge number of speakers. In, in fact, Hindi stands second or third in the list, Bangla, maybe fourth. So such a huge speakers, huge applications, huge potentials, and you also to be honest, it's a very good market also. Even then, the resource is not yet available. So realization is not very encouraging. We need, we have realized that now the time has come, we need to develop many resources of various types, mostly in digital way, digital form, to be available to the people for the promotion, for the protection, for the upment, for the encouragement of the language. So for this, we need corpora of different types. So here we find out, we have given the presentation here and a figure and a, in a uh, form of a figure to show how we need to do, what we need to do. So here we say in one by one, keeping in mind in general the Indian languages and dialects, what are the things we need at present? First one, corpora. We first need corpora of all types, particularly we need at least corpus of text materials produced in Indian languages and each corpus should be a purely monolingual, multidimensional, multidisciplinary, balanced, general or reference corpus. For all the Indian languages we need it. So, we should ask our, ask our governments ask our funding agencies to provide fund so that we can develop good representative corpus for each of the Indian languages. If not all the dialects, all major languages that included in the Indian constitution should have at least 10 to 20 million, minimum 20 million uh, data of text, of text in a wavenly uniform manner they are developed in Unicode format. So that is our first requirement because that should be treated as the most reliable resource, most reliable resource, most faithful resource for all kinds of linguistic and non extra linguistic technological activities. Similarly, we need speech corpora for each of the major languages. We know there are many good speech corpora so far developed for English, Spanish, Chinese, Japanese, Korean and many other languages. And these speech corpora are properly tagged, annotated, processed and analyzed and utilized for various activities related to technology development. Speech technology, text to speech technology, speech to text technology and many other domains. Unfortunately, I am very sorry to say that not a single speech corpus is ever developed in any of the Indian languages till that. Although I also know that some PhD scholars in different universities, in different IITs and different other research centers have developed so small, simple speech sample databases for their individual research purposes. Immediately I can refer to some research works or speech database developed in Kharagpur IIT, even CIL Mysore. I have checked those data. I found that these are good databases, no doubt for specific individual research purposes. But these are not speech corpora in the true sense of the term. So our second important requirement is 
the speech corpora for each of the Indian languages. At least 10 million words of running speech data should be available compiled in a very uniform manner, in a systematic manner, representing various multiple possible dialogic introductions and monologic texts and normal conversational data. That should be transcripted, that should be annotated, that should be marked out and that should be made available for all kinds of speech technology related research and development activities. Until and unless we prepare those things, made those things, make those things available to the young generations of young, new generations of scholars who are going to explore or understand or study those languages, it is very difficult for them to move forward. So, it is our responsibility that we should develop those corpus for many of the Indian languages and made them available for technology, language technology or speech technology research and development activities. Even if we claim that we can develop that one, that one, that one, that is not possible until and unless these resources are met. Third one, which I require, which we, I think we require for Indian languages is the special corpus. Special corpus means that <coughs> we need a specialized databases for specific researches. We need our data speech corpus or text corpus produced by learners. We need text corpus used in newspapers. We need text corpus used in English newspapers. We need com text corpus used in different corporate houses, different uh, uh, commercial activities. Why do we, do we need? Because these are going to address specific needs, requirements. Suppose we want to develop good teaching modules, even in the first language, for Indian learners. We don't know what kind of errors they make. Until then we under identify what kind of errors, errors those learners actually make in the process of learning uh, texts or languages, we cannot pre prescribe good textbooks for them, good study materials for them. And to analyze those errors or to identify those errors, to we need to have a learner corpus. So my suggestion here is that we should go for developing good learner corpus for many Indian languages. And analysis of those corpora and information extracted from those corpora may directly be used to supplement our knowledge base, to supplement, to modify those text materials and to enhance the quality of the study materials to the learners. The fourth requirement is tagged corpora. It should be made clear to us that until and unless a corpus is properly processed and tagged, the utility of a corpus is drastically reduced. So, at least we should have corpus at post tagged corpus. Post tagged corpus is required for most of the Indian languages, so that we can have at least say 10 million or uh, 10 million data tagged at the parts of speech level that can be used for all kinds of linguistic activities. We can have similarly we should go for monitor corpora for all major Indian languages so that we can gradually upgrade the database in those monitor corpora over century, over years, over decades, over centuries to have a huge linguistic archive for all of the all the Indian languages. Monitor corpora is very much required to understand how language are actually undergoing changes in time, what kind of external internal uh, pressure is creating um, changes into the language. So, my suggestion is that we should keep in mind to develop monitor corpus similar to that of say uh, Bank of English. So, by our Oxford text archive where you can find out that that gradually upgrade the uh, data newly produced and systematically arranged and put into the archive. So, we need a kind of system where monitor uh, corpus can be developed in a diachronic frame. Immediately, we should start like that. And we are talking so long for the major Indian languages, but uh, 
Now we have already realized and our uh, uh, we are happy also that our present government is also interested to document the minority languages, endangered languages, the mother tongues. So in a uh, in a pan Indian big project for documentation preservation of the minority languages. So we know that there are some projects are still going on where attempts are being made to get data from those languages. So in that particular context, it is very much important that we should have dialect corpora for all the dialects used in India. All major dialects or minor dialects, endangered dialects, whatever the dialects are available. There are nearly 6,200 uh, or 2,800 something like the dialects so far spoken in India. So we need to develop good dialect corpora for all those languages. It's a part of our social responsibility, national duty that we should develop dialect corpora in a very systematic way, in a digital fashion, so that that can be properly restored, preserved or promoted. Since we are talking about tagged corpora, also we need uh, for parsed corpora for almost all Indian languages, where all sentences are passed, all sentences are passed, identified the parts of uh, phrase structures, the clause structures in a tree diagram, tree diagram, uh, diagram board, so that they can also be used for many of the language technology research and activities. If possible, we can go for comparable corpora across Indian languages, so that cross-lingual verification, validation, Comparison is are possible with reference to the comparable corpora. Suppose we have corpora between uh, Odia and Bangla, then we can use that for studying between the closeness, uh, lex semantic, linguistic, all kinds of similarities to explore from the information available there. The second important area which I find very important to be uh, in Indian context about the lexicon. To be honest, we have good dictionaries. To be honest, we have good lexical databases. But to be honest, we don't have good general lexicon for all the Indian languages. So this is must. If you want to have any language technology related works, any language technology related activities or resources to be developed for language people and the languages, then general lexicon is must. That needs to be available in printed as well as in digital version. So once the corpora are developed, it would be quite easy for us to compile those general lexicons. So my first argument in the frame of lexicon is that we should have large lexicon, general lexicon for almost all the Indian languages. And once this lexicon database is available, we can further expand it similarly in a similar fashion to compile data or compile words in other ways we can also use that general lexicon to assemble separate databases of say set phrases or idioms across Indian languages proverb lists or term banks scientific and technical term banks bilingual or multilingual lexical databases so these are very much essential things for all not only for language technology, but for the promotion, education and all purposes. So these are the lexicons which can also be utilized for developing the word net which is already been developed and that can be expanded for many other languages. We also need with the reference to the lexicon digital dictionaries. For us, there is no digital dictionary available for any of the Indian languages similar that kind of a Oxford English dictionary in the printed digital version, we need to have a kind of dic dictionaries for all the major Indian languages. This unfortunately has not been done because of the corpora and maybe some other technological limitations. But this is high time that we should concentrate, we should try, we should focus on it, we should try to develop digital dictionaries for all major Indian languages that can be readily available as a part of the e-governance, part of the e-education technology part of the e-learning methodology, part of the e-learning process so that people
people all across the globe can utilize and refer to those materials, resources for their activities. The third part which we need to emphasize here is the tools. As I have already said that for uh, many of the Indian languages we are called resource poor languages and technology poor languages. So we need to develop many te techniques and tools for almost all the languages. And the primary focus should be on some of the major tools that we think will, can be utilized for all purposes. The one concordance tool for almost all the Indian languages, tool for lemmatization, tool for keyword searching, tool for passport part of speech tagging, tool for chunking, tool for tokenization, and tool for parsing. These tools are mandatory for almost all the languages. When the digital corpora are developed, it is mandatory we should go for these tools and many other tools if possible, but these are absolutely necessary at present for the promotion or for the language technology or corpus related activities in all the Indian languages. Then <coughs> the other important area which we need to focus is that we need to have an archive. So, I have been speaking about it uh, for years now that this is high time when we are developing digital texts, digital corpora, digital materials, linguistic resources in Indian languages. We need to have a digital archive for Indian languages. We may call it a digital archive for Indian languages or we can call a national archive for Indian languages. This would be a text archive where all the texts, text corpora and other digital resources should be available, freely downloadable and for global and national access. It would be an open source kind of archive where all materials can be accessible by people of different uh, societies, different communities, different researchers. So starting from to students to all people or technology people can utilize that. So we should have a speech archive where all the speech uh, texts collected from various Indian languages are preserved and stored. We can have also a text archive where all the text corpora can be systematically preserved and processed and uploaded. We can have a dialect archive also similarly where the dialects and other related information should be systematically stored and represented for research and development activities. We can also have the lexicon archive where lexical archive databases are preserved, stored, updated, continuously changed, modified for usage. We can also have a good pan-Indian tree bank where all the sentences of all the languages should be systematically designed or arranged. We can also have similarly the archive of idioms, all the idiom idiomatic expressions available from Indian languages can be systematically arranged, having their mutual translation and equivalence arranged in a linear or in some uh, elegant fashion for cross-lingual access and reference. Similarly, we can have a proverbial archive. So here, our proposal is that we should go develop uh, at least uh, one archive, if not many where Indian digital resources, linguistic resources can be put together, pressed together and made accessible to the common people and a continuous process of research activities, research and development activities would be carried on, would be going on for the betterment, for the upgradation of the knowledge and resources for the generations to come. Finally, the most important part is that the pro project, the thing I am trying to project here the huge and massive task, the very huge project. It involves uh, from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, all the languages, all the sp sp speakers, and all the dialect varieties, and all those things. So, since it's a very massive task, we need a huge number of human resources to carry out those tasks. And since it's a very, very specialized task, specialized activities, we need a large number of specialized
properly adequately trained people. So, in our scheme, we also need to focus on the development of human resource. The huge army of experts should be developed who would work in this part. In this group, there would be some corpus linguists who know how to collect data, how to store data, how to process data, how to utilize data, how to analyze data. So a large team of corpus experts, corpus linguists are required for that. We also need field linguists who know how to conduct interviews, how to go to for field, field studies, how to collect data from the informants, how to conduct surveys, how to row store data, how do the technicalities involved into it. We also need a need lot of computer scientists because this is a massive task, it's a big project, a lot of computers should be involved into it. So the computer science people would be able to handle the store, process and develop programs so that management and retrieval of data uh, from the archive is a very an easy process. A large number of translators would be required for translation purposes, tagging purposes, for annotating the data, for generating the metadata and making those texts intelligible for all communities. Also we need lexicographers to develop the lexicons, different types of dictionaries, different types of thesauruses and many other things. Also we need statisticians who will do lot of statistical studies on different types of text and materials and corpora to find out to draw mathematical or numerical studies or inferences, quantitative studies to identify the distributions of properties and elements into the languages and also identify how those elements and languages are spread across the country and how those can be it can be accessed in different ways. As we have already noted that we have already identified different types of requirements, different types of uh, resources, tools, archive and human resources. So here I would like to more emphasize on the national archive or Indian languages and we also need to identify the basic functionalities. Here is a list of the functionalities that I need to highlight here before I sum up how these things can contribute towards the growth and progress of the Indian languages. The functional modalities of the proposed archive which we propose as the National Archive for Indian Languages may work in the following way. It will be a concerted effort to assemble all texts and speech corpora developed so far in all Indian languages and are now under the custody of individual developers. So, it will also assemble those texts which are now developed at the individual level and scattered all across the country, put under the, under the one umbrella or under, under roof. It will be those, uh, bring those national resources under a single platform for proper archiving, documentation, processing as well as for distribution. It will act as a centrally approved repository of linguistic data and resources for all Indian languages from the, for, in the form of text speech and lexical databases. It will facilitate and provide required financial as well as technical supports for creation of new language databases by different individuals and organizations. It will set some benchmark standards of corpus data collection and storage for Indian languages for various research and development activities. It will work for monitoring the corpus development projects, activities in the uh, if the benchmarks defined uh, defined by it is not properly followed and and creation of the in creation of the future language corpora it will provide technical support and share those knowledge base with all the individuals and people engaged in the tasks it will facilitate the development and enrichment of competent manpower and expert of human resources through proper trainings workshops seminars and others. It will create and maintain websites and home pages which will be used as primary gateways for accessing Indian language corpora, both written and spoken, corpus personal tools and language resources. It will work for designing and providing help to industries 
and we may research organize an increase of appropriate tools, techniques, systems and software of language and speech technology for the common use. It will work for providing a link between the individual researchers, academic institutions and masses so that language corpora as well as linguistic resources developed from these studies are available for the people of the country. Also, it will work in collaboration with similar institutes, university and research institutes, research bodies, other countries for exchange of linguistic data and information, knowledge through joint or individual or institutional research combinations, exchange of scholars, academic program and sharing. So, in sum, what we realize here that with, in comparison to other languages, advanced languages in Europe, America, Australia and others or even in some in Asian countries, the status of Indian languages with regard to language technology and language corpora is not much encouraging. So, it is high time for us that we should concentrate, we should try to focus, to develop the linguistic resources and corpora as proposed here and move, move in this direction so that utilizations of corpora and their resources and other information examples retrieved from corpora actually benefit the entire country and its people and its languages for their promotion, development and improvement. Thank you.